Hi everyone, welcome back to our channel once again. In this video, we are going to study about one of the important concepts of electronics that is power supply rejection ratio. In today's world, we come across diverse set of electronic gadgets, be it the mobile phone you use, be it a car, the sensor inside the car, the display system in, in, inside the car, or the battery management system that powers up all these electronic gadgets embedded in the car. Or be it avionics, medical electronics, industrial electronics, everywhere. There is abundant number of ICs that run different functionalities, be it analog or digital. And each one of them, and they are consist of ICs, integrated chips, to run the integrated chip. Now, what are the factors? What are the parameters or entities that defines the performance of this these ICs? So one of them is power supply rejection ratio. It basically tells us how well a given supply, how it is able to reject the noise that comes through it and appears at the output. The better the rejection ratio, better is the device performance. So in this video, we are going to study about the power supply rejection ratio. What is it? Then why we need to study power supply rejection ratio and its significance? What is power supply rejection ratio? Then we'll also walk through how to calculate the power supply rejection ratio and a lab setup for an ADC. Then at the end, we'll try to analyze how does the power supply rejection ratio varies with the frequency as we know. So let's look at one of the industrial application of power supply rejection ratio, why we need to study, why it is important to consider power supply rejection ratio in designing an IC. So if you look at the modern devices, they include several systems and mostly powered from the same battery. So what I mean to say is, let's say, here is a battery and this powers many systems. Now this battery powers the many systems. So let's say S1, S2 and S3, sensor 1, sensor 2 and sensor 3. Now the sensor 1, let us let us say it's con it, it controls the ABS and the sensor 2, the display system. And third one, let's say it, it controls the airbags in the car. Now what happens if the current com consumption for one system or device increases under certain conditions. What I mean to say is, when we apply ABS, the current drawn by the circuit S1, the current drawn by S1 may be more than, more than the usual. So in that case, what happens is, the battery voltage, the battery voltage and thereby the supply voltage to the other devices powered from the same battery can vary. Therefore, the DC power PSRR is important when designing the battery management. So we can say that depending upon how sensitive the system is, a designer can use the LDO to help combat the voltage drops. So that's about one of the application of power supply rejection ratio, why we need to study the power supply rejection ratio. Now, what is power supply rejection ratio? Let's talk about that. Power supply rejection ratio basically measures the ability of an amplifier or let's say the analog to digital converter to reject the variation in the power supply voltage. Or in other words, we can say it tells us how much the output of the amplifier or an ADC changes in response to the changes in the power supply voltage. So what does it mean is, what does it mean? It means how well an ADC or amplifier can reject the noise or the ripple coming at the input of it. So the actual performance of the amplifier or analog to digital converter doesn't change. So that the actual performance of the ADC or the or the amplifier is not impacted. That's the whole idea of power supply rejection ratio. Let's try to understand how to calculate the power supply rejection ratio. So it's quite simple to calculate the power supply rejection ratio mathematically. It is the change in the output voltage to the change in the power supply voltage. Mathematically, the PSRR, we can say, is nothing but delta V out 
divided by delta V in supply. If you, if you want to measure in terms of dB, it would be 20 log of output ripple divided by input ripple. Now to measure the ability of an ADC or the amplifier to reject the ripple or the noise is nothing but the PSRR. Now to do so, how to make the setup? So we intentionally add an AC signal a small enough AC signal that should not impact the performance of uh, a device or we can say it should be large enough to be measured but small enough to not impact the performance the operation of the ADC or amplifier so if we have an ADC here so we should add the AC component only a little a small peak to peak AC component thereby it should not impact the operation of the ADC and it should also be large enough to be measured at the output therefore we can verify our power supply rejection risk therefore uh, we consider a small peak to peak uh, sinusoidal waveform so if you look at the setup here this is ADC here is the reference voltage and the common mode voltage VCM given to the one of the term input terminal that is positive terminal this is the DC, the supply voltage VDD to the ADC and here we add a small AC component say for 100 millivolts peak to peak, peak to peak that is 0.1 volt right. So that is given here and we have a DC let's say 3 volt and AC is 0.1 volt that is 100 millivolts. We are considering 100 millivolts so we can measure at the output of ADC and it should not be so much so that it could impact the operation of ADC. So now let's say what we get here is 0 0.0001 volt or 0 0.0001 volt which is nothing but 10 power minus 5 volts right. Now this is the output voltage or you can say output ripple. Now what we can uh, given at the input was 0.1 volt and the output what we are getting is 10 power minus 5 volt. Therefore if we try to calculate the PSRR it would be 20 log of 10 power minus 5 divided by 10 power minus 1 which comes down to 20 log of 10 power minus 4 and that translates to minus 80 dB. So minus 80 dB is the power supply rejection ratio of, of the given ADC. So this is how we calculate the power supply rejection ratio of the ADC. Now coming to how does the PSSR, PSRR vary with the frequency variation. Now how to, if you look at the setup, so what we gave was 0.1 volt uh, volt peak to peak AC signal along with the 3 volt DC over the on the top of the 3 volt DC which goes to the VDD the analog supply to the ADC. Now this AC signal can be given through function generator sine wave and we can vary the frequency from let's say for few from few hertz till the megahertz. Now as we vary the frequency the power supply rejection ratio decreases at higher frequency. For example, if you look at the graph here, we can see that this is logarithmic scale. So this is 10k and this is 100k. So till 100k, you can see a slight before 100k, the power supply rejection ratio remains almost constant and thereafter it decreases, it rolls off and roll, rolls off to 55 dB that is at 1000 kilohertz or we can say 1 megahertz the power supply rejection ratio decreases. So at higher frequencies the power supply rejection ratio decreases. This is because high frequency noise signals are harder to filter out from power supply lines. However, we can if we keep if we a larger output capacitor 
can help us to maintain the PSS, PSRR at high frequencies. So in conclusion, we can say power supply rejection ratio is crucial parameter in, in design of an ADC or amplifier as it, as, as it determines the amplifier's ability or an ADC ability to maintain the stable output, even in presence of fluctuations in, in the power supply voltage. So if we calculate, we can say by calculating power supply rejection ratio, an engineer or a designers can evaluate the performance of a data converters or an amplifiers and select the most suitable ones for their applications. That's all about today's tutorial on power supply rejection ratio calculation. I hope you found this video informative. Stay tuned for more electronic videos and don't forget to like, share and subscribe for future updates. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned.